Accompanying flamenco dancing or singing is one of the traditional uses of the Spanish guitar, an instrument which is played today almost anywhere in the world. It's a classical instrument which has always been a sociable one. In fact, during Shakespeare's time, its English counterpart used to hang up in barber's shops so that customers could play it whilst waiting their turn. Here is the main body, and from it runs the fingerboard and the neck with the pegs at the head for tuning. At the bottom end, the bridge holds the strings, which are always plucked with the right hand fingers. In the early days, they were made of gut, but nowadays, in the treble, they are pure nylon, and in the bass, nylon covered with wire. Usually, the thumb plucks the lower strings, and the first, second, and third fingers, the upper ones. The frets, where the left hand stops the strings, also used to be gut, but are now made of metal. Today, as in the past, it's used to accompany singers, because you can play chords, and rhythms, As it's light to carry, it was the ideal instrument for the early troubadours and wandering minstrels. Light, but strongly built of fine woods like mahogany, pine, spruce, and rosewood. Nowadays, two cross struts and this fan strutting are used to strengthen the face or soundboard, while the back is strengthened by four straight cross struts. Both Beethoven and Berlioz called the guitar a miniature orchestra, and its many contrasting sounds make it an ideal solo instrument, as you can hear in this 16th century dance tune, La Volta. of plucked stringed instruments goes back thousands of years. Two of the earliest, of which we have actual records, are the lyre, there's a picture of one dated about the year 4000 BC, and the harp, found in all the earliest Egyptian tombs. And, dated about 3500 BC, there is an instrument like a guitar, on a stone carving in the tomb of one of the kings of Thebes. Little is known then, until about 800 AD, when we hear of the Arabs, using a four-stringed instrument which came to Europe through Moroccan Spain. And by 1270, we find quite a number of plucked instruments established. The lute, with a rounded back and several sound holes. The name was probably derived from the Arab alud, which becomes in Spanish laud. Then the Latin guitar, with a flat back and only one sound hole, was the folk instrument and the forerunner of our modern guitar. But it was overshadowed by the vihuela, the court instrument which had six strings, while the guitar had only four. By 1500, the vihuela was the most popular instrument in Spain, while the lute dominated the rest of Europe. By 1600, the popularity of the vihuela was declining, but the shape of the present guitar was beginning to emerge, and during the next hundred years, the guitar became as popular with painters as the lute had been before it. Here's a work from that period by the Spanish composer Alonso de Mudara.
During the 200 years between 16 and 1800, various instruments like the lute and the guitar had their moments of popularity. Two of these were the sitan and the mandolin. The mandolin was originally an Italian instrument which evolved from an early small lute. It has four double wire strings and is played not with the fingers but with a tortoiseshell plectrum. The sitan was also played with a plectrum and had wire strings. This beautifully carved instrument was made in Italy. Samuel Pepys, in the year 1660, with the help of the Lieutenant Sitter and two candlesticks with money in them as symbols, we made Barber's music, with which my Lord was well pleased. In England, the Sitter became known as the English guitar. This is the instrument which used to hang up in Barber's shops. It had a fat back, like a guitar, and although this is an unusual one, the body was normally shaped like the lute, another instrument played only with the fingers. As the lute and the Spanish guitar became the two most important rivals, it's interesting to compare them. The head of the lute is always sharply turned back, whereas that of the guitar is only slightly angled. The guitar is simple to tune with its six single strings, giving these notes. E, A, D, G, B, and E. This modern English lute has 12 strings. These are really five pairs tuned in unison. D, G, C, F, A, and two single strings on top. D and G. There used to be so many different kinds of lutes with different tunings and varying numbers of strings, but tuning has always been a major problem. A writer of the 17th century said that a lute player of 80 years of age had certainly spent 60 of them tuning his instrument. The main difference, of course, is in the shape. One of the greatest lutenists of the Elizabethan age was John Dowland, and I'm going to play now the beginning of one of his galliards. Now the guitar. Some of the finest music played on the guitar today was written originally for the lute by the great composer Bach.
the two most popular types in Europe, but all over the world, plucked instruments of totally different sizes and shapes were being made and played. A gourd resonated vina from southern India. From China, a moon guitar. A lute from the Congo. A Russian peasant guitar, the balalaika. From Turkey, a small lute. From East Borneo, a guitar with two wire strings and five wooden frets. And these are only a few. In France, the guitar was very popular at the court of Louis XIV, who even took lessons on it. And in Italy, Stradivarius, the great violin maker, had made several guitars. This is one of his instruments. By the early 1800s, guitarists like the Spanish virtuoso Fernando Sor and the Italian Giuliani were giving performances in all the European capitals. This was not surprising, for the guitar is a virtuoso instrument with an extraordinary range of colors. For instance, by plucking over the fingerboard, we can get a very mellow sound. Whereas down near the bridge, we get an extremely sharp sound. I can change the tone color by playing the same note on different strings. On the first string, it sounds like this. And on the third string, like this. A sort of muffled sound can be made by first damping the strings with the side of the right hand. The bell-like sound of harmonics is got by placing the left hand fingers on the strings without pressing them down, like this. Vibrato gives more expression to a note by fluctuating its pitch and this is done by moving the left hand finger backwards and forwards behind the fret, which tightens and slackens the string. Two effects which are only sometimes used are to tap on the strings where they join the bridge and to strike all the strings with all the fingers. This range of tone colors and the distinctive quality of its sound has tempted many of the great composers to write for the guitar. Handel used it in his Spanish cantata, which begins like this. Boccherini included it in chamber works. And Schubert, at the age of 16, wrote a cantata for three voices and guitar for his father's birthday. He also composed many of his songs to the guitar when he couldn't afford a piano. The accompaniment to his well-known song, Fisher Maiden, sounds quite natural on the guitar. Donizetti, Rossini, Verdi and Weber used it in various operas and Weber wrote some charming divertimenti, one a duet with piano. instrument on which that master of the orchestra, Berlioz, was really proficient. And his constant companion on all his travels was the guitar given to him and signed by his friend Paganini, who gave up playing the violin in public for three years in order to study the instrument. Paganini wrote an enormous amount of music for the guitar and it clearly shows his love and understanding of the instrument.
Many attempts have been made to replace the guitar with instruments like this, a lyre guitar, made around 1800. This was a great favourite in Regency drawing rooms. Attempts were even made to add keys, but the simple form of the instrument has always survived because of its close association with folk music. Well, that's the American 12-string folk guitar. In South America, they have many local variations on the Spanish guitar. This one's called a charango, and it's made out of an armadillo shell. It has five double strings. And another one is called the tiple. It has, rather unusually, four triple strings, giving this sort of sound. And of course, we all know the amplified plectrum guitar, or electric guitar. cry from the delicacy and subtle tone colours of our Spanish guitar. The 20th century revival of interest in it is due mainly to the work of the great Spanish guitarist Andres Segovia, whose marvellous playing has inspired many composers to write for the instrument. Naturally enough, Spanish music always sounds well on the Spanish guitar, and this Sevilla by Albéniz, although originally written for the piano, sounds almost more at home on the guitar.